Hi, welcome to Chemical Bonding. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to talk about molecular polarity with nonpolar molecules. Specifically, we're going to look at the general rules for classifying molecules as polar or nonpolar, distribution of electrons in the molecule, understanding of the use of the word symmetry, nonpolar molecules, specifically looking at diatomic molecules, monatomic molecules, Nonpolar molecules with polar covalent bonds, always a fan favorite. And finally, shapes that follow a symmetrical distribution of charge. Let's start off by talking about how to classify a molecule as polar or nonpolar. Whether or not a molecule is polar or nonpolar depends on two unique things. The first is the type of bond involved and frankly, looking at the distribution of electrons within the bond. In general, nonpolar covalent bonds always result in nonpolar molecules, and we're gonna be drawing lots of these in class. Just you wait. Polar covalent bonds may result in polar or nonpolar molecules, depending on the shape of the molecule and the overall distribution of charge electrons within the whole molecule. Let's talk about distribution of electrons in the molecule. Molecules can either be classified as having a symmetrical distribution of charge, electrons, or asymmetrical distribution of charge. Whether or not a molecule has charge symmetry, in other words, is symmetrical in charge distribution or an even distribution of charge, can be observed by drawing in polarity arrows for each individual bond. Let me say that again. Each individual bond within the molecule. And polarity arrows are going to be absolutely key to figuring out molecular polarity. To draw polarity arrows, the arrow starts at the less electronegative atom and points towards the more electronegative element in the bond. So here we have HCl, Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.2. Chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.2. So I'm going to draw my polarity arrow. I'm going to start at the hydrogen and I'm going to point it towards the chlorine. This is going to show an asymmetrical distribution of charge within the bond itself. Because now when I look at this, I know that within this shared pair of electrons right here, those electrons are getting pulled more towards chlorine. Not 100% transferred like an ionic bond, but definitely closer to the chlorine atom than the hydrogen atom, which would mean this hydrogen now would have a slightly positive charge, while at the same time, the chlorine, as it's more electronegative, is pulling that shared pair towards itself. Therefore, the chlorine is going to have a slightly negative charge associated with it which means it's an asymmetrical distribution of charge within that bond. A symmetrical charge distribution in a molecule is observed in three different situations. The first is nonpolar molecules. In other words, looking specifically at diatomic molecules. These are molecules that are made up of all nonpolar covalent bonds. In other words, these elements are bound to themselves. So if we look at the diatomic molecules, we know that they're nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. That is their names. Now let's look at a specific example. Here we have a fluorine bound to another fluorine. We know that the electronegativity of fluorine is 4.0. So I'm gonna label this one as 4.0 and I'm going to label this one as 4.0. They have a shared pair of electrons right in between them, right there. So each fluorine is pulling equally on the shared bonding pair. So this fluorine is pulling in this direction, the other fluorine is pulling in this direction, and there's equal pull in both directions by each of the fluorines. This molecule of fluorine is composed of one nonpolar covalent bond. In other words, a symmetrical charge distribution within the bond. Since there's no overall polarity to the molecule, the bond polarity arrows cancel out, which is key. The molecule is nonpolar and has a symmetrical charge distribution. So you might be saying to yourself, how do I recognize that? 
Well, if each of my thumbs represents a polarity arrow, if those thumbs are both pointing away from each other, that means those arrows are canceling out and you have symmetry. In other words, I could almost cut it down the center, fold it over on itself, and it would be a mirror image. That's what we mean by symmetrical charge distribution, an even distribution of the electrons within the molecule. The next type is a monatomic molecule. These are molecules made up of a single atom. This includes the noble gases, as we see below. Each noble gas has, typically, eight valence electrons. So we could think of neon as an example. So we know that neon has eight valence electrons. So we'd represent that as Ne with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons surrounding it in its outer valence shell. Equal distribution of electrons, therefore it's a monatomic molecule. For our third classification of nonpolar molecules, we're going to talk about nonpolar molecules with polar covalent bonds. Molecules containing polar covalent bonds have an asymmetrical charge distribution within the bond itself, an uneven charge distribution. When polarity arrows in each individual bond within a molecule cancel each other out, the molecule is classified as a nonpolar molecule and having a symmetrical charge distribution for the whole molecule. So we're going to look at two examples. The first is carbon dioxide. And we know when we draw carbon dioxide, the Lewis dot diagram, we're going to start with the carbon. So carbon has four valence electrons. So one, two, three, four. I have two oxygens here. So I'm going to put an oxygen right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to put another oxygen right over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to circle my shared pairs. So it looks sort of shady, but there's a shared pair right here and a shared pair right here, a shared pair here on the bottom between the carbon and the oxygen, and a shared pair right here between the carbon and the oxygen. And if I draw out the structural diagram of this, which will look a lot better, we'll have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen with its two non-bonding pairs right there, another double bond, an oxygen, and its two non-bonding pairs up here. Now the key thing to realize here is that each of the atoms involved in this compound has an electronegativity. So we know that the electronegativity of carbon is 2.6. And the electronegativity of oxygen is 3.4. So I'm going to give each of these a 3.4. Therefore, the oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon. So the oxygens are going to be slightly negative. This oxygen is going to be slightly negative, And this carbon is going to be slightly positive. So when we draw in our polarity arrows, we're going to start at the less electronegative element and point it towards the more electronegative element, like in this case, and then again from the less to the more. And what we can see here is that these electronegativity arrows are canceling each other out. And because they're canceling each other out, this is a nonpolar molecule, a nonpolar molecule. The bonds themselves are polar covalent because we can see a difference in electronegativity values but the molecule as a whole has a symmetrical distribution of charge, therefore it is nonpolar. Let's look at another example. Uh, it's going to be carbon tetrachloride. So I'm going to do a carbon right here, and let's recognize that there's going to be a shared pair between each of the carbons and the chlorines, and each chlorine is going to have its full octet. So there's one chlorine, here's another chlorine, with its shared pair, and another chlorine. And there's my four chlorines. Each chlorine has a full octet. It's sharing a pair of electrons with the carbon. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign electronegativity values. I know that the carbon is 2.6, and the chlorine is going to have an electronegativity of 3.2. So 3.2, 3.2. There, every chlorine has an electronegativity value associated with it. So now I'm going to draw on my polarity arrows. I'm going to start from the less to the more, the less to the more, so we can see that those two arrows cancel each other out. Less to more, 
and less to more. And each of these arrows are pointing away from each other. They're pointing away from each other. So as they're pointing away from each other, they cancel each other out. Same from going side to side. They're both pointing out. There is a symmetrical distribution of charge within the entire molecule. Therefore, this is an example of a nonpolar molecule with, again, polar covalent bonds. Let's look at two more examples. Shapes that follow symmetrical distribution of charge. Again, we can always return back to our diatomics. So we have a bromine sharing an electron with another bromine, and each of these has its lone pairs. We see this shared pair of electrons here between the two bromines. There's equal pull in both direction. We can look at this bond, and we know because the electronegativity values would cancel each other out, that this is a nonpolar covalent bond, NPC, nonpolar covalent bond, and the molecule as a whole is also nonpolar. Another example that we could use is silicon dioxide. Silicon has the same Lewis dot diagram as carbon, so it too will form a double bond with an oxygen and then another double bond with an oxygen. And of course, we have the lone pairs right here on this oxygen, and we'll do the same thing over on this oxygen. Silicon has an electronegativity of 1.9, while oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.4. And this oxygen will also be 3.4. So again, we can put polarity arrows from the less electronegative to the more electronegative, and the same thing here, less to more. So again, these arrows are going to cancel each other out. We do not have a dipole. We do not have one end that is more positive or less positive. Therefore, this would be considered a nonpolar molecule. Let's look at the shape of tetrahedron. And for that, we're going to use the molecule CH4. This is an organic molecule, otherwise known as methane. And again, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to start with my central atom of carbon. It's going to share a pair of electrons with hydrogen. We can see how it is pointing in sort of a cross shape. Now hydrogen is going to have an electronegativity of 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, .2, and 2.2. .2. And the carbon is 2.6. Therefore, when I draw my polarity arrows, I'm going to go from less to more, so like that, and then from less to more, and I can see that those two arrows cancel each other out. And then hydrogen to carbon, less to more. So again, I can see that my polarity arrows are pointing inwards this way and canceling each other out, pointing this way and canceling each other out. Therefore, again, we have polar covalent bonds, but the molecule as a whole has a symmetrical distribution of charge. So what did you learn? We went over the general rules for classifying molecules as polar and nonpolar. We talked about distribution of electrons, understanding the use of the word symmetry that's always a little rough, nonpolar molecules as diatomic molecules, monatomic molecules, nonpolar molecules with polar covalent bonds, we'll be working with that a lot in class, and then finally, shapes that follow a symmetrical distribution of charge. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.